If you have your Bibles with you this morning, we ask you to turn to the little book of Joel, Joel chapter 2, and uh, not a lot of preaching you hear from the minor prophets. Um, they're only called minor because they're not as long as the other prophets in length, uh, but they lived uh, with them. They were their contemporaries. They didn't come later, and uh, they had the same problems as Elijah, I mean, as uh, uh, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, um, they ran the same race. Joel chapter 2, and we're just going to read the first verse uh, for our text. <clears throat> Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in the holy mountain, in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your word. Lord, we thank you for its truthfulness. We thank you that it doesn't change, and even in the day that we live, we rely on it heavily. Lord, we pray that you bless to the hearts of all the hearers, that you draw the lost, that you wake them up this morning before, uh, before your time of coming. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes. Now, maybe some not so familiar verses. Uh, Joel's cry was to Israel, but it is very much a cry that should be sounded to everywhere today, not just to the Lord's right. churches, yeah. to the streets, to the hollows, everywhere we can find, because what Joel predicted is coming. Mm -hmm. And I personally, I personally believe it's very soon. Uh, my own opinion is this. When the last elect is saved, we're out of here. And we'll be at home with the Lord. So the, the big question for you is, are you prepared to go? Right. Because that's not an Armenian question. That's a question that should be considered. Uh, the Bible says, make your calling and election sure. And that means I need to ask myself the very same thing too. Yeah. Am I prepared to meet the Lord Jesus Christ because he's coming? Mm -hmm. The reality is very, very near. And you don't hear the sound, the, the alarm sounded like you did when I was a boy. Uh, it's no more today than a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Yeah. You do not hear of the reality of the coming of Christ. You know what? If you had someone major come into your house, I would say President Biden, but he wouldn't come by my place. Uh, you would make preparation, would you not? You would get ready. You would you would see that uh, someone interesting was coming over. Why don't we make preparation for Christ? Even the redeemed. Uh, I don't know about you, but I don't think you're that much different. I don't know that I'd be ready right at this very second to be in face to face. I, I'm sure that I've got some things that that I'm ashamed of. I, I'm sure I've got some things that that uh, that could be better. I know that I could be nearer to Him. And with that, each and every one of us, not just the lost, but the redeemed as well, we need to make preparation for this verse. Joel's advice was blow the trumpet, and notice where it is, in Zion. Now, that mean, that, that, that's how they gained attention. That's how that they uh, led the people by blowing the trumpet. The armies were led by the music that they heard, by the direction of the trumpet. And the day in which we live, I'm blowing the trumpet, Christ is coming. Amen. It is a very much a reality. It's not a story from the past. The Lord Jesus Christ is not even at hand. Uh, uh, you know what? He might even come before the end of the day. He might come before the end of the year. And 2023 might be the, the year of his appearing. Are you ready? Are you ready to meet the Lord Jesus Christ? And, and so we see that Joel says what we're responsible to do is sound the trumpet. Jesus is coming soon. Sound the trumpet. Let people know. Sound the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my, in, in my holy mountain. Now, an alarm is something that you have a 
specific response to. When you hear the alarm, you know what to do. Now at work, we have this thing called code red. And uh, the alarms will sound, the doors will shut, and someone will say code red, area one, code red, area one. And all of us grab a fire extinguisher and we head to that place. And you know why? Because we've been trained to do so. And we know what code red means. And we know what to do when it's called. And we respond. Now that being true from very simple people and very simple situation, why can't we sign the code today? Christ is coming. Those of you that are lost, this is no joke. This is not something you've heard a thousand times and you're going to hear it again this morning. It is a reality. Christ is coming. I am sounding the code. And the second part of the code is this. The reality that follows is heaven or hell. Mm -hmm. That's your reality. That, that's where your place will be for eternity. Now, we, we can't even concept eternity. I fully believe the reason there became an, even, an evening and a morning was for our benefit. It wasn't for God. There is no time with God. Right. And so if there is no time with God, you know what else lacks time? Hell. There's no time there. There's no counting the days. You're just there and there <laughs> and there and there again. And there's no end to that horrible, wretched, burning, filthy place ever. That, 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 that blows my mind because it's a, my, my entirety of my life has been marked with times and days and years. And in that place there will be none. So we need to sound the alarm as the day approaches. Let all the inhabitants of the land, now notice what that word is, tremble. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. Now, for someone to tremble, there has to be a threat. I was talking about Jody earlier. When I had COVID, I would just shake like this. Just felt like I was freezing to death. I was trembling. Now, why was I trembling? There was a threat. There was a threat on me. It was an illness. Uh, I could die just as easy as I lived under the, the, the hand of the Almighty. When you're cold, there's a threat, and you tremble. Listen, church, there's a threat. Christ is coming. This little ball of wax called grace is very much nearing an end. Amen. And we'll be home with the Lord if you're saved. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're not saved, being left here is far worse. You know what the... Now, and you hear a lot about the, the plagues that will hit the earth, and there's a reality to that. But you know what I think the, the most scary part is the Lord withdrawing himself. Right. We, we've never experienced that. There's always been the presence and the goodness of God in this place. In those seven years, it will not be. He will be gone. And you know what? There's no room for repentance then. Remember, the Bible says that they will cry for the rocks and the hills to fall on them. And you know what? In addition to being a rebellious, God-hating folks, it will be an impossibility then. They couldn't, they couldn't do it if they wanted to. These foolish left-behind movies, listen, that's trash. There, there's not room for repentance then. That, that, that does not exist. And so we see that Joel tells us the very best way to do it is to shout and to give people warning that this is a reality and it's coming. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Yeah. Verse 2, he begins to describe it. A day of darkness. Now, does that sound familiar? It does to me. I was offered a job a few weeks ago. I did not take it because I could not get the presence of the Lord to do that. But of this place, and I'm not going to say where it was, they said, Larry, please come. It's evil here. And, and they were serious. 
It's a day of darkness. Mm. When men marry men and women marry women and then they adopt children, it's a day of darkness. Yeah. We live in a very, very dark day. Now, Roe v. Wade was reversed. But you know what? Uh, I wonder how many lives it's truly saved. You know, this is, this is one thing I've learned from healthcare. You can write a note and say whatever you want to. So if they say the mother's life is in danger, <laughs> who's going to argue with that? Right? right? We live in a very dark day. We live in a day where love no longer exists. It, 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 there, there's not even respect anymore. You know, I, I'm 50, be 54 tomorrow. Uh, I remember a little community I lived in in Dover. We occasionally come to Dover on the Lord's Day. You could hear the crickets. You did not open anything on the Lord's Day. And you're talking about lost people that sell beer on Monday. We live in a dark day, people. It, it's, it's literally a different world than I grew up in. And I just imagine, uh, Brother Junior and Sister Diane, they probably could tell stories different than me. But I want you to see that we are to sound alarms in the day of darkness. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. Now, I want you to see that Joel says a day of clouds. Now, I, I'm not the smartest man, and I, I, I'm certainly not uh, uh, an, you know, an understanding of weather, but you know what? I know when it turns off black, weather's coming. I know when the wind begins to blow and the thunder begins to crack, trouble's on the way. Many years ago, and uh, me and Donna and the kids, were, our kids were still home, so it was a long time ago. We were coming back from Ohio. I'd been preaching a meeting up in Ohio, and somebody called me, and it, it, the Lord used it to amaze me because he believes in grace now, too. But we had a radio station back then. We did a radio show, and he was going to convince me to be an Armenian. And we talked from Cincinnati all the way to Clarksville. And... We, and I was buzzing along there, and I looked over to the side, and a tornado just went right beside us. And, and the Lord kept us safe. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? A storm's coming. Mm -hmm. you, think, you, you think Joe Biden is something else. You ain't seen nothing. Right. You get a God hater, a true God hater in that White House, we're not going to last. It, it's not going to be, it, it, it's coming very, very, very soon. And we, as my generation, we got so used to our blessings, if they were removed from us, we, wouldn't even, we, we would be literally paralyzed in what we do. Trouble is on the way. A day of darkness and a day of cloudy, of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong. Now, to fully understand that text, you have to actually be in the mountains. You have to have visited a mountain. And I've been to the mountains in East Tennessee and a couple of other places, and I'll never... Uh, you need to talk to Linda Kent Cummings sometime, and she's just about as a Michigander as you can find here, around here. And I was talking to... I landed one day, and they were missionaries way up in East Kentucky. I mean, just the uh, foothills. And she was like, Larry, I never saw the sun to 12 o'clock. And uh, the sun would come up. It would shine about two hours, and it would start going down the mountain on the other side. And that was all they had. So the sun is coming up, but we are may or may not be seen. In other words, it may be on us before we realize. The sun's coming. You know, we, uh, we always mark the sun. Look, it's beautiful today. I, I love the sun. I can't stand the cloudy, cold weather. But, 
How do you mark your days? How do you know that another month has passed? You count it by the sun, and you count it by the moon, and you know time has passed. See, a day, a new day is very near at hand, church. We need to be very cautious. We need, we need to be, we need to pro, be proclaiming the, the name of Jesus like we never ever have before. That's where we need to be. Then he says in the last of the verse, neither shall be any more after it, even the years of many generations. In other words, Israel is ending. This time, the church age, listen, it's ending. And, and we've operated in it some 2,000 years, and, and we as our generation, we, we have no idea what an era in ending is really about except for a, a few political things. And they may or may not have been good. Uh, my mother always attested that, well, I wasn't in the middle of the Depression. Mom always had her own view of everything. And uh, I was reading one day about 1936, and it literally said the height of the Great Depression. <laughs> and so, you know what? Sometimes how we perceive things isn't necessarily true. Jesus is coming. It's reality. And if you ever thought about what you do on the average day and face Christ with it, that's a very humbling thought to me. That, that, and, 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 you know, I try to study and I try to preach, but uh, deep within my heart, I know that I could do more. The day is coming. Verse 3. A fire devoureth before them, meaning the enemy, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as, a gar as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, nothing shall escape them. Now that's the days after the catching away. Nothing, nothing should help them. In, in the book of Revelation chapter 9, it said that fire would bring down from heaven, did it not? And nothing is going to help them. It said that they would cry for the rocks and the hills to fall upon them. But have you, did you ever notice? It doesn't say that they did. Have you ever called, cried to a rock and got a response? I haven't. I don't think I've ever called one. I hope I haven't. Uh, but you won't get no response from a rock. What kind of help are you going to get there? In other words, there's not going to be any help when Christ's presence is gone. There, there's not going to be any, anyone to cry out to, not anybody to reach out to, not anybody to help you anymore. Look unto Christ even today. Today is, your day, is the day of salvation. Verse 4, the appearance of them, as in, meaning the enemy, the appearance of them as is, is as the appearance of horses, and as a horseman, so they sh and so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of the mountains, shall they leap. They, like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. Before the face of the people shall be much pain. All the faces shall gather blackness, in other words, soot and smoke. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march every one on his ways and shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. And they shall walk every one in his path when they fall upon the sword they shall not be wounded. Now you look at this description of the enemy. They're going to be well aligned. They're going to, they're going to run like a well-oiled machine. And notice, notice it says, even when they do get wounded, in other words, when, when the group fight back, it's not going to affect them. You know, right now, we have the advantage of, of the enemy that we can cry out to the Lord and he will preserve us. And that day, that's not true. Y'all remember when Elijah was preaching and he was with, uh, he was with uh, his, uh, his student and uh, 
He prayed, I think I preached on this a few weeks ago, and he prayed and said, Lord, open his eyes. Mm -hmm. And said that the hills were full. See, that won't be here then. And so the enemy will have full range. Christ is coming. He's going to withdraw himself, and literally, this place will be like a living hell. And I do not mean that as a cussing word. I mean literally like hell on earth. This will be a punishment for the living at that time. And Jesus is coming. Do you know him? Do you trust him? Do you understand the reality that we must need to be going the way of the cross? The enemy has no problems. Verse 9. They shall run to and fro in the city and shall run upon the wall, and they shall climb up upon the houses, and they shall enter in the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them, and the heavens shall tremble, and the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Now, darkness is a, is a thing generally most people don't like. But this ain't just like dark. Like I have to have it dark to sleep. Our bedroom, the yard light goes through our bedroom. I hate that. Uh, I like to be able to be dark to sleep. Me, me and Donna had it contrary on that when we first married. But she finally came to see the right way. Uh, and uh, I guess y'all slept with every light now. So that's pretty much what she told me. And uh, uh, we, uh, but... That's a dark. You remember in the plagues of Egypt that it was described as a darkness that could be felt? Mm -hmm. Three days and three nights. It's not just turning the lights off and it being cloudy outside in the night. It's a darkness that can be felt. It's a darkness that can be known. I praise the Lord Jesus Christ from His merit. I won't, I won't suffer that. I, I won't ever experience that because of His grace and goodness. What about you? What about you as an individual? Do you, do you truly want to be there for a, a darkness that can be felt? That's what they had. And you know, and this is another problem of that kind of darkness. You don't know where the enemy is. Yeah. You know, if you have an opposer, as long as you can keep your eyes on him, you're in pretty good shape. But if he's coming to you in the dark, what are you going to do? Jesus is coming. And more importantly, or just as important as Jesus is coming, is what's going to be left behind. A world that has no protector. Remember, I think it's in 1 Thessalonians. It talks about the Lord having a hand until he withdraws. It's going to be withdrawn. And then we'll live in a time or... The loss will live in a time like never been known before. It, 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 will, be, it, it will be a horrific time to live. And, and so we find that even in Joel's day, and this was a judgment against Israel, but the judgment that we'll experience is against the world, the entirety of the earth. Uh, verse 10, the earth shall quake before them, and the heavens shall tremble, and the sun and the moon shall be, shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining, and the Lord shall utter his voice before his many armies, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word, and for the day of the, for the, day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide in it? Now, in verse 11, pay careful attention because that's where we'll be. Uh, the Bible says the Lord's army is very great. That, that it's not going to be impacted. It's not going to be, it, it's not going to be a problem. It's not going to be a difficulty. So, where are you at? Isn't it, isn't it entirely important that this morning... That, that we ask ourselves, the Lord saved me 42 years ago, but you know what? I would be a very spiritually wise man to ask myself once again, do I know the Lord Jesus Christ? That's not doubting 
That's following scripture. That, that is doing what the Bible says. Uh, now I want to jump over to the next book, Amos, Amos chapter 4, and read one verse for our hearing. Amos chapter 4 and verse 12. Amos chapter 4 and verse 12. The Bible says this, Therefore thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, because I do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. Now we've all heard that hymn a thousand times. O oh, prepare to meet thy God. Did you know it came straight from the Bible? That's not an Armenian piece of advice. That's a so worthy piece of advice. Prepare to meet thy God. And I, I'm not just talking to the lost, although you must listen to me this morning, but I'm also speaking to the redeemed. Prepare to meet thy God. Because, you know, even though you're saved, the Bible says this, there'd be some there with... 30, uh, it's talking about uh, the increase in, in, in your harvest, some 30-fold, some 60-fold, and some 100-fold. You know what? Sometimes I don't even think I make the 30. Right? You know, <laughs> a lot of people don't like this, but that's not part of God's blessing that's given by sovereignty. Your salvation, you know what? You can't believe until it gives you life, but you can work, and your works are up to you. Now, that's not Campbellite teaching. I'm shooting with you straight. And if you do nothing, the Bible says there'll be some saved so as by fire. And I, I don't want to be in that group. And, and so we find, are you prepared? Lost people, I can tell you assuredly, you are not prepared. Saved people, that's your call. If you're genuinely redeemed, yeah, you're going to meet the Lord Jesus Christ and blessed be the name of the Lord. But are you prepared? What have you done to serve Him? What, what have you done to further the kingdom of God? And so we see that we as the Lord's people, we must be prepared. We must be ready. Now go with me to Acts chapter 15. And we'll bring this down to a a New Testament look. Acts 15 and verse 11. Acts 15 verse 11. Sometimes sovereign gracers don't like this simplicity. Acts 15 and verse 11, the Bible says, but we, be but we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be <coughs> saved. How do you believe? And listen, I didn't, I didn't know one thing about predestination when the Lord saved me. Uh, in fact, I've never even read the Word. And I'm being honest. For it, saved in a, literally a free will Baptist church. And you know what? It was that simplistic. I believed. I knew the Lord Jesus Christ had died for me and that he would save my never dying soul. I believed. I put my, my full trust in him. Every fiber of my being laid on, the, laid on the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. What could be simpler? Do you know that? Is that, is that, is that part of your understanding? Do we sometimes understanding the doctrines of grace complicated issue that's very simplistic? You know what? You'll believe when he gives you life. <laughs> My baby's first cry, all, all of them, was after they were born, right? Very same thing here. Do you believe? Acts 16 in verse 31. Now, just prior to this, one of my favorite verses, Acts 16, 14, the Bible says, speaking of Lydia, whose heart the Lord opened. Opened to who she was. And you know what it says? It says of Lydia that she was, how, how does it put it? That she was a righteous woman. But she wasn't saved. 
Some suggest that since she was a seller of purple, that that was the hem line to the prayer shawl. And that part is true. I don't know if that's the purple that she was selling, <laughs> but it is true. And that she was aiding and helping the men that went down to the temple to pray and to cry out to the Lord God. But you know, her problem was this. She was lost. She didn't know the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord opened her heart. And, and she saw her devastation. She saw her inability. She, she saw her need. And it never says anything about the sinner's prayer. It never says anything about uh, Paul giving her some advice. Just says that she, the Lord opened her heart. But then we see the fruits of redemption. The Bible says she was baptized and all her house. And then later on, about where this verse is, she begged the Paul and Silas to stay in her house. She said, I'll take care of you. That's fruits meet for redemption, is it not? I don't know about you, but I don't like strangers spending a night in my house. But she was with it. She had an understanding. And so we see that, again, it is that simple. Uh, Acts 16, uh, verse uh, 31, the Bible says this, And they said, meaning Paul and Silas, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Now, a lot of people, this is one of the Church of Christ people's favorite verses. But read, read verse 32 this week is your, is your Bible study, and it will tell you that they went down to her house and preached the gospel to her children too. And they believed also is exactly what the scripture says. And, and so we see then that what we sometimes complicate is that it was simple belief. Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you know whom he is. The last place we're going to read is Romans chapter 10. And you know your Bible as well as I do, I hope. In Romans chapter 9, they went through in detail concerning the doctrines of election. Remember? In fact, he said, Jacob have I loved, and Esau have I hated. Some people say, oh, he loved him less. Well, that's not the word of what the word of God says. And you know, if you look at him in man's eyes, he's almost a better boy. <laughs> he really was. <laughs> Jacob was a thief. And literally what his name means, you know, sometimes I get bummed out about Larry. Uh, you know, at least I wasn't named thief, right? <clears throat> and so we see that he gets through teaching that marvelous truth in chapter 9. And notice what he tells them in the next portion of the letter. Romans chapter 10 and verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Are you saved this morning? I thank God that I am. I don't give him praise for it as I should, but thank God when things are turned up on its back in this world, I'll be gone. I won't have to deal with it. You think people are hungry now? You ain't seen nothing yet. No. You think, uh, you think people live a wretched life now? You wait till God removes himself from this place. They won't be just aborting babies. They'll be killing old people mm -hmm. and little ones mm -hmm. like my grandchildren back here. Mm -hmm. That'd be daily business. Mm -hmm. And you know why? Because God has removed himself from this place. Are you saved? Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't want to be here in that time. I don't want to live when literally Satan himself has the full dominion doing whatever Seems good to him. That's a scary thought, isn't it? I think it's Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians. He says, we wrestle against uh, uh, the powers of the air, is how it's put. And uh, 
That's a scary thought. But now, I'm not a good wrestler. I always usually end up on the bottom. And, but you know, at least when I wrestle against spiritual things, I have, I have a great one on my team. Mm -hmm. Think about when he's gone. Mm -hmm. Think about when it's not there. Do you know him? 